Hello everybody, this is Drew Demon, the Devil Stockbroker, and I'm going to be covering the Revlon Gamma Squeeze. This is actually a squeeze play that I had been studying and researching for the last week or so, um, and I was on the fence about it, but uh, lo and behold, there was a big newsprint, and I jumped on the trade without hesitation, as did the rest of Hell's Trading Floor, so I wanted to explain why this stock went 100% on Monday and why it's still looking like it's preparing to make another move upward. This play is absolutely not over yet, but I will let you be the judge of that. This video is cut into two parts, one from yesterday and another one from today, so the first half you'll get my perspective from the time that the uh, stock was shooting up, and then we'll move on to the afterthoughts. Without any further ado, let's get into it. All right. Yeah, we'll talk about we'll talk about Revlon. How'd you find this, J Rob? Because you, you called this you called this one out first. So how did you find Revlon back before it moved? Because you found this before it made its first move, right after they announced their bankruptcy down here, like uh oh no, 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 no. Not October. Right here. It was like some sometime in June, right? You called it down yes. here. Okay. We uh, we we saw we saw a couple of bankruptcy plays, and I remember hearing, learning about the bankruptcy bounce, and essentially how bankruptcy isn't necessary after the turmoil isn't necessarily a bad thing for a stock. In fact, it can point to restructuring, positive growth opportunities for the company, yada yada yada, so on and so forth. So, for a projection after the dust settles, oftentimes can be pretty promising, especially in the short term. So we had just finished adding the feature to the uh, to our surge bot that detected halts as well as bankruptcies. Well, what do you know? We get one firing off that says Revlon is filing for bankruptcy. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, wait a second. Even if Revlon files for bankruptcy, this is a company that ha is in the mistake. So it's a... It, it, the IP alone, the intellectual property alone in this company can be sold off for a lot of money. So I don't see this just going and disappearing. Man, this is a prime candidate for a bounce. So we alerted the uh, the trading floor and a lot of us waited for uh, what we perceived to be the bottom, took positions. And sure enough, like a few other plays before it and after it, it took off on a bounce um, and over the last several weeks has been fighting different levels and consolidating. But I mean, that that was essentially the uh, the bread and butter of, of how we discovered Revlon literally as it announced its bankruptcy uh, or as the rumors started hitting and they announced that they were looking into bankruptcy. We got that notification on the minute and uh, found it before a single tweet had hit Twitter. And so what happened? Did they res raise money or did they like sell out? Yeah, so what ended up happening is just the other day, there was a ruling where they were approved uh, for a bankruptcy loan, essentially to the tune of, uh, I, I'm not exactly sure of the figure, but a lot of money. $1.4 billion. So I just happened to be, and this, I will finally tell everybody the story. I was, I was about to go to the bathroom and I went to go sit down and I just went and glanced at my phone and I got a newsprint from my, from my portfolio tracker. And I, uh, uh, I was, I had Revlon on my watch list, and I wanted to see newsprints on it. And as soon as I sat down, I open up my phone, and I see bankruptcy court grants loan of one point four billion to Revlon. I'm like, holy shit! I just jumped up and I ran to tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I. <laughs> I was just about to nice, you know, have have a nice, you know, calming moment to myself, you know, take care of business, and then all of a sudden, I saw I saw the news that Revlon was getting bankruptcy court relief, and they received a approval for a one point four billion dollar bankruptcy court uh, approved loan, and that is that is what caused it to move. Now the actual move, 
didn't happen for another 30 minutes after the uh, after the news came across. It hit at like uh, it hit at like 1 p.m. Eastern time, uh, almost exactly yeah. 1 p.m. Eastern. Reuters published the article and I saw I saw it on my notifications a minute after it printed. If I had just looked a little bit too soon, I'd have missed this entirely. And I just so happened to be in the right place, right time. And I let everybody in the Discord know right away, uh, as quickly as I could, at about 10, 10.05, or, or I'm sorry, uh, 105, 1, 106, something like that. And then I went and fired off the fastest tweet that I could possibly put together in order to let people know. And sure enough, it, it took the hell off. So The only time I've been in a position Didn't... where an option was worth 2,000% of my original buy-in lasted for minutes, not an entire couple of... I mean, it's literally... I've been sitting here at plus 2,000% for a trading day and a half. SPRT. <laughs> I mean... SPRT is the so, only thing I've ever seen do that. So that's the thing. This is exactly like SPRT. This is exactly the same situation that SPRT was in. I'm going to go get my uh, my inspect short squeeze. Didn't didn't there wasn't there another move before this that was caused because they started looking over their books and realized they actually had already paid off a loan or something? Yeah, there was the initial big pop that had happened was they had uh, debt on their books that they had not realized that they had actually already paid. So all of a sudden, they had more money than originally thought, which brought into additional question bankruptcy and whether or not that was actually going to be approved, whether it was going to go through. But so, suddenly they had a whole lot more money than they had assumed. And it, that's that first after, if you look back through the chart, when you see that first big downturn on the news that they were uh, eyeballing bankruptcy, that next major okay, move okay. upwards was based off of that news. Yep. Oh, now, now I have to show you why this is the same situation as SPRT. This is bigger than what I looked at yesterday. This is the options chain for Revlon of its float in the money versus the strike price. And at $10 right now, 75% of the stock would be in the money. If this thing keeps going, <laughs> there's more options. There's more call options that are available at $12. $12, there are more call options in the money than there is stock to buy. And that's why this is the same and that situation. that is only as expiration on Friday, right? That's expiration through to August 16th. So if this, if this holds this price all the way through August 16th, they cannot physically buy enough shares to cover this. This will create a supply crisis. This is the exact situation that SPRT did. And it went from $8 to $53 in two weeks. Does that's anybody check that's the SEC files? Is there any dilution on the table? There is no dilution that I am aware of, but let's go check dilution tracker. Let's go check it. And and that that would I mean saying that that would that there's not enough shares to I mean that changes after each expiration. So after each expiration, the, the I mean some some are going to exercise some I, I would assume most probably won't. Um that those numbers should change after Friday based on expirations and stuff too. So like, I'm not saying that it's, it's not still up there and it's not still massive or anything, but just keep that in mind is that like when that stuff changes, yep. they, they don't technically have to cover once the, oh, if they buy back the option, like they don't, they're not out there trying to cover for calls or anything like that. If they, if they buy the option back off the table. So they're at, their ATM capacity and shelf offering makes them ha uh it gives them a total shelf capacity of seventy five million dollars. They have an outstanding share count of fifty four point two million. The float is seven point five million. I have no idea how much of this can actually be diluted. I okay they they have an at the money they have an at the money offer available of 2.5 million shares 2.57 million shares available to be specific this is according doesn't to dilution tracker.com doesn't the owner still hold about 77 percent of the total um not the free float but the outstanding shares 
That's a good question. So looking at the, let me go ahead and switch my screens here so that y'all can see this. Do, do, do. Okay. So Revlon, this is the holders according to Dilution Tracker. The largest basket of shares is between Middleman Investment Management and Alberta Investment Management. Each have 1.369 or 1.368 million and 1.007 million shares available, according to their 13F HR filing. So a lot of these are like BlackRock and Vanguard. This is ETFs. Clear Street and State Street, that's uh, that's Jane Street Capital. Geode Capital has a little bit. This is this is very little institutional holdings. Most of the institutional ownership was most of the institutional ownership is just it's it's micro PP amount of shares available. So most of this is held, I'm assuming, by insiders. And the thing is, is that looking at the charts, if I if I go back and I look at those, let me go see where most of those institutional, or I'm sorry, the insider holders are sitting at. This price is only where they were trading at in February of this year. Why would they sell now? Why bother? If the company is going to survive, why not wait until it returns on your investment back to where it was just trading, what, five years ago? Revlon's not going anywhere is my point. Like the insiders don't really have an incentive to sell their stock. But this is, this is exciting. So this is the scenario. I have, I have described to you the possibility of a supply crisis gamma squeeze. This is a unique situation. It only ever once happened to SPRT. It's the only time that it's ever happened. And if it happens on this one, it can be worse because SPRT, when it went in the money to $10, it was 100% of its total in the money float. When it went to $10, 100% of the stock was in the money. That was the supply crisis situation. And when those needed to be delivered, the week after was total fucking pandemonium. And it went to $53. Revlon is already at that situation two weeks ahead of time. It's at 75% of shares in the money on the call chain right now. And if this thing goes past $12, then it's 100%. So yes, this is an insane situation that can absolutely bone market makers big time. But it's going to require a buy-hold mentality willing to take the risk of holding on to those call options and not selling shares. And the advantage is that retail has the mentality to be able to actually do something like that if they adopt that, you know, that, my, that ape mindset of diamond handing it until it goes to the moon. This is the closest, in fact, the only stock that I have seen since SPRT with the exact same setup. It's the only one. And the thing is, is I cannot go back and get SPRT's chart because it doesn't exist anymore. The company merged, but SPRT had a move from like, it was like less than a dollar. And then it just suddenly shot up to three bucks and then it drove <laughs> back down and it went sideways for three months. And then suddenly it shot back up to $8 and then went sideways and it put all the shorts that were in it underwater. And they and the call chain was totally blown out. So this is the same situation, but better because SPRT was just an old dot com company that really wasn't worth anything. It was just a it was just honestly the perfect setup, you know, it was a perfect storm of events. With Revlon, this is a recognized brand. This is a big, big company. It's honestly one of the most recognized women's makeup companies out there. They're in all retail stores. People see this brand and they know it. And and women especially recognize it. So you can bet that Wall Street will also recognize an opportunity like this. 
So I want to go get the live options to actually show what prices are most significant because we can see the prices where the most uh, open interest is concentrated and you'll instantly know where your areas of support and resistance are at. Oh, wow. This is, oh, this is hilarious. Oh, this is hilarious. Give me two seconds to switch my screen over to you guys. Just a heads up to Spy just got murdered. Okay. Ooh, yeah, dude. Look at this. Now, before, almost all of this was concentrated at seven and a half dollars and below for on August 19th. Now look at where all of it is. All of this is at ten dollars to twelve and a half. This is where all of that open interest just shot up to. This this is an op the market makers are the ones who are filling these, okay? They don't have the shares. They don't. It doesn't exist. There's mathematically not possible that they have enough shares to cover this. There's it's not, 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 not mathematically possible. So if retail grabs these contracts, holds them, and shares get purchased enough to drive the price beyond this and refuse to sell. I want to really make this very clear. It's a very risky play. I'm. It can collapse at any time. You don't know what's going to happen. So this is not something to just like YOLO full port on, okay? Don't do stupid shit like that. But recognize the opportunity. Mathematically, if this price closes above Twelve and a half dollars this week. There's mathematically not enough shares in existence on Revlon to cover all of those calls, and there will be a mad dash scramble to get those shares as quickly as they can as the price is running up. That's where they get screwed. And then this shit goes in the money, and so does this. That's the kind of situation that can happen here. I can prove it just by looking at the chart of SPRT. It was the same exact situation. This is SPRT back when it was at $8. Two weeks before, it went to $53. This is the opportunity. It's well worth it to take a chance. At least like a small position. It's worth it to try. Don't. When do those options expire? These these first ones are for this Friday, August the 5th. That's what this column is. Everything here is for this Friday. And then there's August 19th. Everything here. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to negotiate a position for myself. I'm I am I am interested. You know what? I'm, I'm going to go I'm going to go back on to the recording right now because uh, I just remembered something. Um, so. For, for all y'all in YouTube land after the fact, I actually forgot that uh, Chart Exchange had a uh, historic chart of SPRT. Same setup as Revlon. In March, there was nothing happening. Then they announced a merger negotiation with uh, Greenwich Holdings. They shot up to uh, 10 bucks, and then consolidated from there. They got the merger was like put into effect, and then they said they set a date. Of when it was going to happen, SPRT had that gamma ramp the same way that Revlon does now, and it shot up to it was actually fifty nine sixty nine. If you can see that tiny tiny print right there, um, but um, the reason why I wanted to record this was because uh, um, Vule, if you want to share the story again, I mean, feel free. But it's a cool story. All the people who banked on SPRT that was a that was a really good day. Yeah, it was awesome. Man. I remember you hopped in like around 11, 12 o'clock at night, and it was I was the only one in BC that was actually in there, like uh, waiting for somebody to hop in. And we talked about that SPRT, and we, I hopped in the next day and paid like three, four months of mortgage on my my house because of that I move, bro. Like I was I was shocked. I've yeah. never seen that much money so quick. You know, besides AMP, but SPRT, yeah. man, that was. <laughs> that was beautiful bro it was a wild wild play i never i never could have imagined i jumped out of this at 18 dollars. i didn't have the conviction to hold it all the way through because i had no idea what was going to happen when it was going to 18 dollars, it was the maximum uh options chain and i was like okay i don't know where else this can go i'm just going to sell now and it just kept going and then they added more calls to the chain and then those got filled and it made the gamma ramp even worse 
So it could happen again. Or they could go to position close only, just like they did with Redbox. I don't know. Like, I don't know what will happen. But if they move to position close only, like, you can be pretty much assured that it's going to kill the momentum. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. But since you shared that story, Boule, I, I got to share my own. So after SPRT happened, um, I, I didn't make that much money on the play. I didn't scale in big time. I was trying to, I was trying to go back to like risk management, which I guess on this one, I kind of wish that I had done a little bit more than I had. But after it was over, I got a tweet from somebody and the guy the guy sent me a picture of his wife who had gone through chemo and told me that they were able to pay all of their hospital bills i believe he was from turkey i remember that that gave me a nod in my throat yeah, yeah. I, I i legitimately like i started crying when i saw that tweet like i never i never expected something like that it was really cool. The guy said that uh, he was able to treat, pay for all of his wife's treatments, and uh, yeah, it was a really, it was a really cool day. And uh, you know what? I um, I would like to do it again. I would like to do. I would like to be able to catch plays like this again. It's the kind of thing that can change people's lives. It would be really cool to do it again. I don't know that I can do it again. It may be the only time in my lifetime that I ever call out something as awesome as SPRT. And I want to give credit to your boy J313 from Reddit, who actually pointed it out to me first. Um, and just he just like he's like, hey, this one looks like it fits your thesis. So I want to give credit where credit is due. He was the person on Reddit that actually pointed out SPRT to me. All I did was analyze afterwards and put attention on it. He did all the work. But yeah, it was an awesome, awesome play. Absolutely life-changing. And like I said, I see the same thing happening with Revlon. That, that Gamma Ramp is the same exact setup. You got all of these calls that are expiring this Friday and then on August 19th, which if I was to play this at all, I would be going for August 19th, if anything, because you don't know if these will expire worthless or not. But if it does take off, like the IV is pretty high, but you could still get like some ridiculous out of the monies. But I want to be sure that everybody knows not to not to do something crazy like full port this. This is far from a certainty. It's a super risky play. So please don't do something ridiculous. Don't bet money that you can't afford to lose i'm seeing way too many people doing stuff like that this is not the play to do that bet like bet like one percent or or two percent you know small position you use use a risk management strategy okay you can shoot for the moon but do it with a small amount of capital please don't 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 bet the farm uh, the play to do that would have been hkd on on july 16th <laughs> that'll be for another video <laughs> Hey guys, this is the True Demon, the Devil Stockbroker. I was just doing a little bit more TA on Revlon. Um, that recording that you just saw was uh, from the day before, uh, while we were actually watching the squeeze take place, um, and just watching it perform throughout the day. I went back and I did a little bit of TA. Um, this is uh, this is now the third of August, Wednesday. Um, so looking at the chart, uh, Revlon's big run that started as a result of the news of that uh, $1.4 billion bankruptcy court loan approval that they received looks like um, they are starting to show a parabolic arc pattern, which is pretty bullish. This is a very rare pattern, um, and it's a bit early yet, so this may break down, but it's just off of the uh, – off of – the price action that I had seen before, it looks it looks quite similar, um, but we may need to see the chart play out on a longer time frame for us to get confirmation. Um, you know, for example, if I take this to the four hour chart, kind of just really just looks like a, a bull flag or a bull pennant. Um, but in any case, the the look of this uh, the look of this chart is very bullish. The um, the breakdown on Rev's price wasn't all that much of a surprise to me. So the um, but it's holding up nicely. Critical area of support for Revlon is at seven dollars and fifty cents, and in a minute I'll show you why that is. 
But right now, Revlon is starting to get that retracement now on very low volume. So this is an opportunity to average down in a position that I'll be looking to take at the earliest, earliest opportunity. Um, and what I would suggest to everybody else, of course, this is, as always, not financial advice, but please be careful and make sure that you're not treating this as a certainty. Like this is, this is a big YOLO bet um, for me and Hell's Trading Floor. It's one of those situations where if you're right, it can be explosively profitable. But the probability of it actually happening, this is a rare setup. It's far from a certainty, okay? So with that being said, let's go take a look at the options chain and we'll see what we got. So here we're going to take a look at the gamma ramp really quickly before we get started. This is based off of a 5.5 million share float that Revlon has. And what you're seeing here on the left is the percentage of the float that would be in the money. So currently at our current traded market price at the time that this chart was printed, the market was trading Revlon at $8.40. That would put 59.6% uh, of the float in the money between this Friday's expiration and September 16th. The reason why this is significant is because there's a, a very strong amount of options interest in Revlon currently between August 5th and August 19th. So these are some significant dates that we need to pay attention to and is the reason why this is such a good setup for a gamma squeeze. This is a particularly rare one where you see more than an excess of 100% of the float is actually sitting on the options chain and the price is not that far away. Revlon moved from $4.40 all the way up to $10 um, over the last two trading days. So that was a really massive price move. And the thing is, is that it was preceded by another big price move after they announced their bankruptcy, which sent their price falling down from about $6 to less than, uh, less than $3. And then they shot back up as soon as an announcement came that they were getting financing relief in order to... Uh, recover the company and keep the business running and get into good graces with their debtors. So Revlon currently, a lot of this, about 50% of this total call uh, volume or open interest, I should say, is actually on August 5th. But another, a, a good half of this, 100% uh, of the float would be in the money on the entire options chain going out to August 19th. And here I'll show you how you can read that. This is the live call open interest percentage of float, uh, which is uh, generated by our Scourge bot here at Hell's Trading Floor. So you can take a look at Revlon on the uh, 15 minute delayed options chain. And this is currently what we have set up. Now, <clears throat> Revlon for August 5th and August 19th, is where the largest amount of options contracts are sitting on the chain. There's a good bit of them that are at this $7.50 level. This is the level that needs to maintain support in order for this to keep going. Um, the reason for that is because if the price falls below $7.50, then it's very likely that market makers will unroll their positions. So if you see this happening, then this is a good it's a good idea to prepare by hedging yourself with puts and be prepared for that price action to come smack uh, the price back down between this Friday and the next. But that doesn't mean that the play is necessarily over. So the other possibility, which the most bullish case, the most bullish case is if we were to skyrocket past $10 and $10.50 before this Friday. This is not the most likely scenario. In fact, it's the least likely scenario. But if it were to happen, then the gamma ramp here would put an additional 20% of the float in the money. Delta hedging for these prices at $10 and $10.50 could cause market makers to buy enough shares to actually send the price flying all the way up through these next several strikes and send it beyond $15, $17, even $20 because of these contracts sitting out here. August 19th. Now the delta hedging is not something that's very transparent. We won't actually know when it's taking place. We'll have to assume it based on price action if it actually occurs. The mother load though is this. 43% of the float 
in the money at two at 23,799 contracts expiring on January 20th. So if we somehow manage to reach $35 on Revlon by that time, I I shudder to think what might actually happen to the stock, but this is this by itself, this one strike is quite literally half of the tradable float. Um assuming a float of five and a half million. Um, the actual float is probably larger. Some exchanges are estimating seven and a half million. Um, so it's it's a little bit wonky. We're not sure precisely what the float is. There's a couple of other things to be aware of. So this is dilution tracker, which you can see Revlon has a low risk of dilution based off of its previous history and the amount of dilution available on its shelf, but it does have the ability to make an offer. It has a very high shelf capacity worth about $20 million of its market cap, which really isn't that many shares. It's, it's about uh, 3 million shares currently, which would increase the float by about 50 to 60%, depending on that 5.5 versus 7.5 million figure. Um, if the, if the company were to do this offering, it would actually be good for them. Um, the reason why I say that is because the company right now, Revlon being in its current situation with, uh, with facing a bankruptcy, if they were able to save themselves by selling stock at the market price, this could save their entire business and they'd be able to pay their debtors, get back out of bankruptcy entirely on their own merits. So dilution in the case of uh, Revlon is neither dangerous nor severe, and in fact could be an extremely bull, bullish case for the stock. However, it would turn this from a squeeze, a big gamma squeeze, into a, uh, a long-term investment because that would clearly cause some pressure on the price and that, that options chain would probably get eaten up uh, and most of it would expire worthless. So there's some risk here to be aware of that everyone should consider. However, we've got a lot of things that are going for us right now. Most of the company is actually owned by insiders. About 8.8% of the total uh, company is owned by institutions, uh, and that's based on a 7.8 million share float according to Dilution Tracker. The short interest of the free float is 72.7%. That's huge. So not only is the stock completely overborrowed, and we can verify this with Ortex as well. Ortex is currently estimating the free float is still at about 79.6% of the free float. And right now the borrowed shares are increasing versus yesterday, which showed quite a bit of shares returned, but not not a massive amount. It was less than uh, it was less than one million shares returned the day previous. The utilization is still currently maxed out. The stock is, however, off of the threshold list. So the failures to deliver have been addressed as of uh, as of Tuesday. So the stock's no longer on the threshold list. It was taken off on Tuesday after uh, I assume a lot of covering action took place. And because of that news of the uh, bankruptcy court approval for a $1.4 billion loan, that may have been what prompted not only this squeeze from retail pushing the price, but also from institutions who were betting against the company to quickly cover their positions because they knew what was going to happen. And they probably got caught up in this move because they likely had extremely large positions to unwind. So the advantage in our case is that cost to borrow still very high. There's still a large number of shares on loan, about two million according to Ortex, um, and that's not accounting for the number of shares which are estimated on the short interest to be at around 4.2 million shares. Um, this figure is likely not accurate anymore because of the rapid unwinding and reassumption of positions short against Revlon right now. We have to see where it goes for the rest of the day. So looking back at trading view, 
this is where the most significant price action is. Ideally, we'll go ahead and cover the bull case scenario first. Ideally, Revlon continues to show strength and consolidation here in this current level and before expiration on Friday is able to regain at least $10. If Revlon were to get pushed up to $10 and close above, this would create so much gamma pressure, it would put 50% of the float in the money, and it would need to be delivered by Tuesday next week. And that would be in time for their earnings report. We don't know what their earnings is going to look like. It's probably not expected to be bullish. In fact, it's expected to be a negative. It's expected to be a loss of 1.31 per share. But... That's not what's important. Honestly, their earnings are kind of irrelevant at this point. The company is in bankruptcy right now. Anything that they do manage to deliver that's good news is only going to help. Right now, everybody's been betting against this company, and suddenly they just came back to life. They have literally just rose up out of the grave and bit shorts in the ass. It's pretty impressive, the movement that this thing has shown. So... Assuming we get consolidation and we can't break above the $8 level or we stay right above, as long as we're above $7.50, that puts a significant number of options in the money. Nice, good, strong close. This, however, might see the price decline going into next week before earnings. The other possibility is because the options closed that by two, uh, closed above and we saw everything that was below $7.50 close in the money uh, as of this Friday, that could be enough momentum to drive the stock back to the upside as delivery is forced for all naked calls that were left unhedged. This is most likely going to be on retail side or any institutions that were holding on to naked calls hoping that they would be able to find those shares later on. Most likely scenario bull case is for Revlon to go into consolidation and show some volatility going out into next week, okay, and the next following two weeks. The big date is August 19th. This is the most significant date. So August 19th, if Revlon is able to break out and get above $10 at any point and close above this, that would put enough options in the money to get 100% percent of the float to close in the money. At that point, you have an SPRT style gamma squeeze as a result of rapid share buying in order to cover all of the naked contracts because we know for a fact there's no way that any institution is holding 100% of the stock. They can't. It's not mathematically possible. This is a supply crisis that can cause the price of Revlon to go absolutely ballistic. And I'm not exaggerating the possibility of this. If you want to go and check another stock that did exactly this, and yes, we I called this out thanks to some excellent due diligence by your boy J313 off of Reddit. He introduced me to SPRT, that's support.com. They squeezed from $8 all the way to $59 in just two weeks because of this exact same situation 100 percent of the float closed in the money when it went and when it closed above eight dollars on august the 20th 2021 the following two weeks it was skyrocketing from ten dollars all the way to an all-time high of 59 dollars plus change at which point it collapsed back down and eventually came back to earth this is a this is a stock that you should only risk what you're willing to lose, but is going to require some serious conviction. It's going to require high conviction to win at this. This is not a likely scenario to play out. It's, not, it's far from a certainty. But if these situations do play out, if all the factors and all, of the, uh, and all the stars align, then Revlon can absolutely squeeze the same way that SPRT did back in 2021. Again, not likely, but possible. The scenario that I am most prepared for is for this to go into consolidation and possibly close above 
$10 going into August 19th. If it were to close above $10, that's my ideal scenario. Anything higher is just more bullish. The higher it goes between now and next, uh, the next two Fridays, and the sooner it does that, the more options it will put in the money. And note that the options chain is growing. Just one week ago, the options chain was only 50% of the total float, even on the entire options chain for the next month. Now, it's 200%. Even with the higher float number of 7.8 million, that's still enough call contracts to put the entire float in the money for the entire month, twice over. It's an excellent setup, but it is risky. So please take everything that I have said with a grain of salt. Understand that this is a tremendously high-risk play that you should not bet more than you're willing to lose on because you're going to be fighting institutions and market makers who are short on this stock, and they do have more money than you. The only thing that retail has going for it that it is in their benefit is that retail can keep buying and holding no matter what. These guys have to buy their short positions on margin, and the higher the price goes, in spite of their best efforts to hammer it down, they are going to start running out of shares to short with. They are going to start running out of time. And if the price stays high, then this thing can squeeze to unimaginable heights. This is not a promise. This is not a guarantee. This is only a mathematical possibility. I've showed you the numbers. I've done my best to explain the due diligence to you. And I want to really stress how dangerous this play is if you bet too much. Don't be emotional. This requires perfect objectivity. Recognize the risk. Bet what you're willing to lose and no more. But this is your money and it's your decision. So with that, I leave it up to you. And thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment. If you enjoyed this content, please like the video, subscribe if you aren't a member already, and consider joining Hell's Trading Floor at discord.gg slash Hell's Trading Floor to be a part of our community and get early access to information just like this that we share every day. Thank you so much for watching and have a hell of a time in the markets.